Well guys, welcome to another first impressions slash teaser video here at Gideon's Tactical. If you've been following me on Facebook and Twitter, you know that recently I got my hands on the Topps Knives Tahoma Field Knife. And uh, I got a lot of requests from people saying, hey, can you do a first impressions? Where's the teaser video? And uh, I wasn't really gonna, I was kind of rolling around, should I do it, should I, should I not? But I've had a lot of requests from you on Facebook as well as on uh, YouTube to do a teaser before we get into the full field test. So this is just my first impressions video of the, the Tahoma field knife produced by tops and uh, designed by Andy Tran a fellow youtuber Andy Tran runs an awesome YouTube channel called Interbark Outdoors I'll have a link in the description below check him out I enjoy watching his stuff uh, kind of you know pushes me to always do better Andy makes some very high quality reviews and um, does some great stuff for the reviewing community and uh, he designed this blade and then tops produced it for him so that's pretty cool stuff there and uh, so we've finally got our hands on it kind of late to the party I know a lot of people have reviewed it but uh, uh, it's time for me to really take it out guys and I'm going to take about two or three months and use this on several treks so I can get a really good feel for this knife you know because there's nothing but been but nothing but praise for this knife I want to make sure that uh, I can you know agree with that statement I think that there are a lot of things right out of the gate going for this knife I'm really excited to review it uh, I think Andy has overall done a fantastic job with a really big beefy survival knife uh, and I'll kind of walk you through this here real quick um, there are one or two things that I'm a little mm, about so I'll point those out as well as we go through here and we'll obviously have to find out when I take this up in the Rocky Mountains on multiple treks and have done a lot of field testing with this to let you know how I feel about the knife so let me tell you just a little bit about it here what we have is a 3 16 inch thick blade and I'm really glad about that I'm not a huge fan of quarter inch knives guys I'm just being honest um, they don't cut as well as 3 16 and I think 3 16 is thick enough to do all the tasks that you would reasonably need to do with a knife um, the batons just fine and it's still tough enough particularly on the quality of a knife particularly tops they make great quality stuff and I'm really glad for that 316s you're looking at a seven and a half inch uh, cutting edge so that's definitely in the survival knife range it's not quite in that you know big chopper wilderness chopper size you know nine ten inches but seven and a half inches of cutting edge and then you're looking at I think uh, it's like eight eight and a half to the handle scale is definitely a good size on the large end so it's going to do a lot of you know more survival tasks shelter building batoning fire prep those type of things for you uh, when you're looking at this knife love that black river wash coating as well really digging that that's a great very low traction coating that's not seen I'm not seeing really any wearing or scuffing on it which is great now um, the idea with this Tahoma field knife that Andy came up with is uh, that it's a one tool option that you take this you don't need anything else this will cover all the bases for you even care, you know take care of some multi-tool functions and um, I, I totally get that there's nothing wrong with that that's how An Andy wants to roll awesome no problem I have no no worries to each his own for me I'm more of a multi-use guy I got to have a couple tools I got to have a Leatherman I usually will have if I'm rocking a knife of this size I would probably have either a neck knife or maybe like a Mora heavy duty companion or something really lightweight thin small blade to do my finer detailed stuff maybe I have a folding saw something like that so um, that's how I roll uh, Andy rolls differently with his design so that's totally cool I'm gonna try and keep that in mind a little bit as I do the review I'm gonna try and keep in mind that this is a one tool option for you and uh, that's what some of the design features have uh, if you can see here those of you who already own a Tahoma you're gonna notice this right away uh, I have the unsharpened uh, edge model originally how Andy designed this is to have a secondary two and a half inch cutting edge on top so that if you really jack up your bottom blade you can rotate the knife and still get you know cutting tasks done with this back cutting edge right here again I'm just not really digging that and I know for some of you depending on the state or the country you live on uh, live in live on live in um, that can actually be a problem you know some knife laws don't allow you to have a secondary edge and they consider it a you know lethal weapon or dagger or whatever and you could get in some big trouble so if you are wanting the Tahoma field knife without the secondary edge like I did you either have to contact tops which is exactly what I did I said hey guys contacted them I want you guys to make me one without it um, and they'll easily be able to do that they just won't sharpen that edge right there um, or you can uh, contact internet bark outdoors again I'll have links in the description below for both of these and uh, Andy sells them as well without the um, edge if you want to on the top so totally your preference but normally when you go to the normal websites you know blade HQ uh, knife center knife works all those places they're going to have it with the sharpened edge on top so just something kind of to note there 
Something else is the notch in the spine. It's designed for wire breaking, bone breaking, some other things like that. You can also throw sparks with it. So uh, I'm not worried about it at all. Some people, you know, you might get a little uh, crazy and a little nervous because of what happened with the original runs of the hoodlum from Buck. They had some really big heat treatment problems, but uh, Tops has been doing sawbacks and notches for I think like a decade almost. And I've never heard of a Tops knife being broken down the middle. Now, obviously I'm gonna do some batoning straight down the middle, you know, wh right where that would be a weak point you know if the heat treat was bad but tops does a phenomenal do job with their 1095 steel which is what this is and does great heat treat so i'm not really worried about that at all it doesn't affect me you know i'm not nervous at all with that but you know just kind of give you guys and, and the blade is so th wide that there is just um, it's not a concern to me. Uh, as we move on towards the handle here, you got a dual lanyard system. So those of you who've been watching the channel, you know I'm really excited about that. I always look for knives that have a secondary lanyard, lanyard hole up here so I can either dual run it or give me the option to lash it because that really helps with chopping capabilities. It keeps the knife in your hand when you're swinging it and chopping it. So I would have ultimately loved to see a hole down here like the Silent Hero and run it like that. That would have been ideal, but this is a great secondary you know, feel and I'm really glad that there are two lanyard holes versus just the one in the back. So so that's great. Um, you got the bow drill holes on either side and a really nice sweep with the handle. I'm gonna keep you really nice and locked into place. These, now this is where we're starting to get into little some iffy stuff here, guys. Uh, this does have a pry bar on the back. From wilderness stuff, I don't see why you would need a pry bar. I would rather have had this just nice and flat so I could do some hammering and palming of tent, tent stakes and pegs and things like that. Again, my preference. I didn't make the knife, Andy did. So Andy wanted a pry bar back there. Uh, that's what you got on the back. We'll test that out, see how it functions when we do the full field test and review. Now, here's the other part. That hump. I don't know how I feel about that hump, guys. Because when I'm holding the knife like this, and I wear large size gloves, my index finger and my ring finger, or my uh, middle finger, go perfectly right over. It feels comfortable. And the handle scales don't feel blocky. They really rounded the handle real nice. There's a lot more contouring than I was expecting. So it doesn't feel chunky and blocky like an SE6. It's a little bit better than something like an SE6. I like that a lot. So back here, fine. No worries. That hump doesn't get in the way at all. But when I do a, a choke up and I'm going to use the finger choil, my middle finger wants to rest, or excuse me, my ring finger wants to rest immediately right there on that hump. So when I am using the knife and doing, you know, more up, you know, close and personal carving and whittling and feather stick making, that is right on my middle finger, or uh, excuse me, I keep saying my middle, my ring finger right here. That hump is all right there. And I've done some feather stick making just kind of around the yard, you know, and just for uh, backyard fires, I've used this, you know, to do a, uh, some minor work. Again, we're going to take this out and do full field testing in the Rocky Mountains on multiple treks. And you're going to see that all in the, the full review coming up soon. Um, but uh, yeah, that could be a problem for me for the more finer detailed work of, uh, of causing some hot spots. Uh, it wasn't necessarily the most comfortable uh, after about five minutes of, of feather stick making in comparison if I just held it back here. So that's something to note. Uh, we're going to see how it really performs after I've done multiple, multiple days of it uh, and really see if I you know, get used to it or if it is something that is going to kind of hamper the ergonomic rating when we do the rating system down the line on the to home. I would have liked to see no hump my personal preference again, and that could become a real big problem with hot spots for my ring finger with extended carving tasks when you're using the finger choil. So um, last but not least, nylon sheath. Um, you know it, we've been watching, if you've been watching Gideon's Tactical for a while, uh, not stoked about that sheath, but I understand that tops can't do kydex for every single, their kydex is great. I understand they can't do that for all their knives because they have so many different designs. I totally get it. But just to upgrade these sheaths a little bit tops and, and put some you know snaps, some good high quality snaps with some adjustability on these two instead of just using Velcro. Uh, and that would be a very doable sheath to at least give you, you know, a year or two of use before you can save up some money and get a Kydex sheath done for this. So just my opinion, guys, on all the things that we've been talking about here today. Uh, again, these are just my first impression. Overall, I'm really excited. I think this is going to be a great performer in the larger knife realm. The only two real you know hangups for me is kind of the uh, pommeling thing, having the pry bar. I would have liked to just see a flat, you know, rear pommel. We'll see how the pry bar uh, functions, as well as that hump on the handle ergonomics could kind of hold it back a little bit for me uh, for extended cutting tasks. Obviously, the full field test and review coming soon will, uh, you know, show us whether or not it'll, you know, handle it. But uh, anyway, 
Again, I got all the links below. Go check out Andy Tran's um, website and YouTube page, uh, Inner Bark Outdoors. And um, guys, stay tuned. You're going to see a full review coming soon. So thanks always for checking out the channel. Hope that this is kind of whet your appetite for the full review. And as always, remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.